um, I am, um, yeah, so I'm a pastoral uh, leader at a school in North London. Um, just a bit of brief history on uh, my career and how I've gotten to the place where I am. Um, so I've got eight years experience. I've been um, a pastoral support officer. I've been a head of year and a director of learning. Um, and I've done a full cycle um, from year seven to 11. And I'm currently, uh, my position is senior director of learning at school in North London. And I lead on year seven to 11. Um, I'm also a staff governor at the school. So I sit on the behavior and attitudes personal development committee and also on the full governing board. And I'm currently doing my MA in um, inclusive leadership with the University of Buckinghamshire after um, being awarded a scholarship. Um, so just some key characteristics of um, the role. Um, I'm not gonna read all of them, but the key ones for me um, as a pastoral leader is number one, to be very, very organized, able to multitask, so able to manage hundreds of things at the same time. Um, also to be driven um, in this type of job, and I'm sure with um, the teaching roles and the non-teaching roles, every, everything's the same, but it's to have a sense of humor. So you have to take everything you know, if you don't smile, you'll you'll cry, especially at this sort of time when it's all very, very stressful and things. Um, and, you know, as a pastoral leader, um, to get to the position that I am in now, um, I've, you know, say yes to everything. Say yes to every opportunity that comes your way. Um, and that will just help in terms of, you know, um, building your experiences and things. So um, I'll go on to talk a little bit and I'll be quick because I know I don't have very long. Um, just um, in terms of key strategies that I've found to be very successful um, in my role is um, number one is to be visible, especially at times like this um, because of COVID and things when the year groups are bubbling and they're a little tired and the bubbles are there. So, um, you know, year groups, you know, need to have the presence of partial leaders, heads of years. Um, to know that they're they're there to support, but also that they know what their expectations, um, the students know what the expectations are. Also, um, the thing that I have found that I've done um, quite a lot is to have open communication with students, um, staff, the team, but also parents. So from the very, very beginning, when I get my year groups, um, I share my expectations with the parents that it's a, it's a partnership, you know, as well as they're raising their children, I'm raise, I'm helping to raise their children. So um, it's working together. Um, I also, the, the main thing that I like to do, and I do quite a lot of, is data scrutiny. So every time that there is a data drop, um, I analyze that data alongside the behavior for learning stuff. So behavior points, e um, achievement points, um, attendance, punctuality. Um, and then I work with partnership with the curriculum leaders so the heads of departments so where I'm analyzing the data I am you know really honing in on why the students may be underachieving um, also you know why um, how are they doing well so if there are students that are doing particularly well what are they doing to support themselves what are departments doing to support them and how can those students possibly support the students that are not um, doing well um, you know, creating study buddies, study sessions, um, and then having those parental meetings to really, um, you know, feedback to the department areas as well, listening to the students. Why do you feel that you're underachieving? You know, what are you worried about? What are your barriers to, the, to, to school and learning? Um, also, strategic versus operational. So, you know, as a, a leader now, I lead on year seven to 11. So I have to know when to be strategic in my role, when to lead on all the other heads of years, um, and also when to sort of get my hands dirty and really get involved in things. Um, it's about what the team can do, what I can do, and what the form tutors can do. So it's really honing on, on everyone's experiences um, and getting everybody that can be involved to be involved. Um, you know, in that I've, been, I've developed things like the behavior support plan, the emotional support plans, that we use in school to really support the students and that's used school wide. Um, and then the last thing that has worked for me a lot is thinking outside the box. So really looking at students case by case, um, you know, adapting plans for particular students. Something might work for one, but they might not work for the other. So it's adapting that to, to suit the students' needs. 
So just a few further tips um, and some reading that I think has helped a lot, and especially in my role in the um, course that I'm doing at the moment, um, there's some particular books that are fantastic. The Pastoral Leadership Handbook is amazing, but the GCSE Mindset um, is phenomenal. You can create a whole form-time routine. You can create a whole year group plan around using this book, um, which is great. So yeah, and also another key tip um, is to join pastoral groups on Twitter and Facebook. The amount of stuff that I found on Twitter, you know, I got my scholarship through Twitter. So, um, yeah, definitely use Twitter and all social media outlets. Um, I'm happy to answer questions and anything. If you guys want to email me or tweet me, that's absolutely fine. Thank you. Thank you.